I'm actually facing this way this time. And I think that the lighting is fine. If I check. Okay, I mean, it is better. Hi everyone, welcome back to Pilots. I was going to film from the other direction for once and show you the other side of my room, but the lighting still isn't great from that side. Uh, maybe at one point I'll just do a spin around the room and you can see what the other side looks like. It's literally just a neon cactus on the wall and some video game slash cozier posters, so not missing much. <laughs> so this is our fifth session, but our sixth video. We are making some headway in the program. We only have about three more sessions after this. And today's session is one of our heaviest ones. So I just want to give you a forewarning for that. We're going to be talking about anxiety. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about what anxiety looks like, what normal everyday anxiety looks like, and then what anxiety that is prolonged and may need extra help looks like. We're gonna talk about different coping mechanisms for that and how we can manage our anxiety in a healthier way. And then we are going to talk about a service project. Um, I also have a little self-care tip. It is one of my favorite self-care tips. It's my um, biggest coping mechanism that I've used throughout my lifetime. Um, and I will show you that in just a second. So we're going to do um, self-care tip, talk about anxiety, uh, the levels of anxiety and how to cope with it. And I will give you some coping mechanisms, some examples and activities that you can do at home. And then we're gonna do a service project and close it out. If this video is uncomfortable for you, if the subject matter is something that you can't handle, I completely understand. I will have an option in the survey. You can still fill it out and you can say, I was unable to complete the session. It was too triggering for me. Um, and that's all that I really need. But I do hope that you stick around because uh, the intention of this video and the intention of this session is to help you understand your anxiety and be able to control it in a healthier way or notice that you need to go seek help beyond what I am offering. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> okay, so today's self-care. Okay, so today's self-care tip is also my greatest coping mechanism, something I've used throughout my life to make me feel better, especially when I'm anxious, mostly what I use whenever I'm anxious, and it's art. Um, as I said before, with other self-care tips, you know, taking the time to do something that you like, something that calms you down and focuses you can be a form of self-care. Just taking care of your brain and saying, you know what, I don't feel so good right now, I'm gonna do something else that gets me focused on anything other than what I'm panicking about right now. Uh, and it started as drawing for me and then it became crocheting and now painting is a new one that I picked up. Uh, I filled out all the canvases that I bought previously. Uh, last weekend I actually painted about eight or nine paintings uh, because my computer broke and I was really anxious about that and I thought like I'm not going to be able to finish my thesis, I'm having a really hard time, I'm really stressed out right now and instead of doing anything unhealthy, instead of putting myself in harm's way, I channeled it into a new hobby which is painting which is something I'm trying to get uh, better at. I usually do reference drawing um, so I look at something and then draw it or paint it. Uh, obviously with crocheting too, I don't just come up with patterns. <laughs> I could, but I don't. Um, but uh, it's something that I'm picking up and something that I'm working on. It makes me feel really good and makes me feel really focused on the activity at present rather than whatever else is going on in my life at the time. If I have to look at a picture and then draw it, I'm focused on making it as perfect as I can and I can't think about anything else. Or it helps me rationalize my thoughts so while I'm painting, I can think through things and have the extra energy, the nervous energy being channeled into something other than overthinking and being paranoid and having a bad time. So um, I'll show you some of my art. I would show you the process, but my process is me painting and then getting frustrated and then putting it down and then doing it again later. Uh, so <laughs> not that uh, entertaining to watch, or it could be, I don't know. Um, so here is one of my favorites. It is a sketch of Rami Malek. Uh, I really like it. I think it looks like him. Could probably do better, but that's what art is, is working on something that you like and improving over time. Um, I also used a reference 
uh, of like blank characters to draw my favorite Fallout 4 characters. Deacon and Dance, and then my character. Um, <laughs> uh, so those are, the sketchbook isn't even full by any means, but uh, I use that whenever I'm on the go and I'm really stressed out or I want something to focus on, I will always sketch. Um, crocheting, I have been very uh, renowned for crocheting in the past couple of years, and this is the first thing I actually ever crocheted. His name is Salsa. He is a little emigurumi fox, is what they're called. Um, and I was really stressed out at my house and I didn't know what to do, so I was watching YouTube videos of people making things and then uh, a tutorial popped up and I uh, saw it and I thought, well, I could learn how to crochet. And ever since then, it's been a really great way for me to focus on something that makes me feel happy and makes me feel like I could create these little bats. <laughs> um, it just threw salsa. <laughs> Bye! Uh, <laughs> okay, and I've also recently started painting, so I'll show you what I did uh, last weekend. This is my uh, friend Matthew uh, having a bad time. It was a very funny picture that uh, my friends and I took, and I decided to make a classy rendering of it. I still have detail work that I want to do on it, but I really like that picture. Um, Hosier, I'm too afraid to paint his face. Uh, because uh, he's too handsome for me to ruin, but maybe one day I will be bold enough to finish that one. Um, this one is a desert portrait that I did. It's kind of hard to see the like detail work because it was at sunset and my roommates and I did not go into the park. We drove around Anza Borrego just to have some time to get out, to not be in our same space, which is also self-care. Get out of your same space, change up your perspective but don't do anything that the CDC would get mad at you about or will prolong our social distancing. Um, <laughs> and then we've got this landscape. Uh, Bob Ross taught me how to do this. I didn't like how flat I had made everything look though, so I outlined things to make it a little bit more stylistic. Uh, and then this is what I'm working on right now. If you've ever seen um, Hosier's Dinner and Diatribes music video, I'll show you the, where is it? There you go. <laughs> so uh, I thought that this was a really cool shot and it's something that I've wanted to paint for a while. And now that I am painting, um, I'm messing everything up. Now that I am painting, it's something that I'm trying to take on. I might not do a great job the first time, but like I said, art is about doing what you want, being creative, and you can always get better over time. Don't feel disheartened if you're not fantastic at it at first. Crafts take time, they take practice, you have to hone your skills, just like with math or with English or anything else that you're learning how to do. It might be that certain subjects come more naturally to you or, you know, some subjects you got to work a little bit harder at. And so this is something that I'm going to work hard at. Uh, mostly shading and also the whole picture is black, so differentiating the different kinds of black in the picture so it doesn't look like it's just his head floating while his arms are on fire. Um, but yeah, so that is my self-care tip, is to pick up a craft. Uh, try to find something that you have been thinking about doing. Um, it could be drawing, it could be painting, it could be crocheting, could be anything. Art is a great way to focus up and calm yourself down and give yourself something to do other than whatever else is going on in your life at the time. Um, and it is a big, big factor in calming me down when I'm having panic attacks and having an overabundance of anxiety. So uh, that is also a coping mechanism. Said that I would talk about those later. I will give you that example right now. So let's talk about actual anxiety and what it looks like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little anxious right now. <laughs> um, let's talk about what anxiety looks like and how we can handle it a little bit better. So in an ironic turn of events, I got so anxious about filming this video that uh, I filmed the entire thing. And now I'm going to film again because I am going to do better because I'm not going to let my anxiety get the better of me. I checked in with myself. I ate an orange. I went to the bathroom. I took a moment to myself. I checked in and now I'm back and I'm ready to help. <laughs> It's so silly, <laughs> but I'm a person. I'm a person with really bad anxiety and it's true and it's honest and it happens. My anxiety is not run of the mill. It's not something that happens just always at this low level. 
a lot of the time, so my anxiety ramps up to a point where I'm all the way up here and I'm very anxious and I have to talk myself down and do different coping mechanisms and different things that are on a larger scale, uh, which is fine. It happens. There are people like that. And if you're somebody like that, that's watching this video, I recommend watching this video and using whatever tools I can provide for you, but also don't step on my paintings. <laughs> He wanted to sit in a sunbeam. I love him. Okay. But I recommend using this video and using the resources that I provide, but I also recommend reaching out to me if you can and asking me for other resources or even using the resources that I will put in the description about mental health care and different um, ways you can access it right now. Uh, I know that it's difficult to go out and get therapy. A lot of people are doing Zoom therapy, and in some cases, parents might not be supportive of therapy in general. I will look for resources that you can get on your own, and I will also provide access to, um, to resources where if you have support, you can get that outside prolonged therapy. I recommend for anyone, uh, especially if you are feeling extra anxious like I do, to seek out therapy, but even if you are at this low level all the time, therapy is great. It provides for you an outside of your friend group, outside of your family, outside of yourself, kind of feedback for tools, for coping mechanisms, for prolonged help that is longer than this video. Um, I hope that this video can give you at least some resources into checking in on yourself and checking in on what it feels like uh, to be anxious for yourself and how to bring yourself back down when you ramp up to a higher level. But if it's not helping, there are other resources that I will provide and I do recommend making the best use of them. So now we're going to talk about what anxiety looks like. Okay. So for me, my anxiety is very much me having difficulty breathing. Um, I get, uh, not like a rapid heart rate, but my heart feels kind of weird, like a, a tightness in my chest and like a very weird feeling in there. And then I forget to breathe because I ruminate on whatever's going on. Um, and then I take a deep breath and then I snap out of it. And I'm like, oh, I'm really anxious right now. I need to do something that's going to help me. Um, there are sunbeams now forming in. I shot this earlier when the lighting was a lot better in my room and now the sun's creeping <laughs> and I have to keep on like scooting over and over. Um, but anxiety can look different for different people. It can be restlessness, uh, difficulty getting any sleep or staying asleep when you are um, able to finally pass out. Uh, it can be gastrointestinal or headache, head distress. Um, you can be uh, having heart palpitations or increased heart rate even when you're not working out, you're not doing anything that's gonna cause you to have an increased heart rate. Uh, it can be that you aren't hungry, you have changes in appetite, you have changes in energy, you feel really fatigued all the time and be like, well, I got enough sleep last night, I drank a cup of coffee, why am I still so tired? Um, I can look at like being irritable, I get really angry when I'm really anxious and I kind of like box people out and I'm like, get away from me, I, I don't need you near me right now. Um, and it can be extreme sadness too. There are a lot of different signs that different people experience. So there's no right or wrong way to identify your anxiety. But it does mean that you do need to take into account how you feel yourself when you're feeling anxious. So find a triggering event, which we'll talk about, and then think about how are you feeling physically and emotionally at that time, and then how can you keep it from getting up to a higher level. So what we're gonna talk about, we just talked about the signs, Symptoms can also be gastrointestinal distress, lack of sleep. It could be anything that is physical or emotional that you feel when you're worried or scared or have too much energy that you can't use. Because as I said with stress, anxiety is a natural part of our lives. It is something that we all experience from time to time, whether we are worried about something, uh, we have a fear of something, or we have so much excitement and anticipation for something, but we can't do anything about it. So it internalizes into that butterfly feeling in your stomach that I hate, but some people might like. <laughs> uh, but that anxiety is normal. That anxiety is what pushes us to study for tests or to keep us away from sunken ships, because that's a fear of mine and I'm terrified of those and they make me very anxious. <laughs> or it can keep us 
um, prepared for the eventual outcomes of something. So thinking about going to a music festival with your friends, that anticipation could be, okay, well, what can go wrong? What do we need to do to prepare for it? What, what do I have to do? And it can help you become more ready for the eventuality of that outcome. Um, but anxiety can get to a point where it's no longer preparing. It's no longer driving you forward. It's no longer something that keeps you safe. It can get to a point where it is ramped up from down here to up here. And that's a point. <laughs> Keep moving over. That's a point where our anxiety is now not manageable, not something that is helpful for us, useful for us, and it is causing us to shut down, causing us to panic, to have negative thoughts, paranoid thoughts, um, anything that can disrupt your functionality. So low-level anxiety can be any of those things that I listed, not being able to sleep, feeling nervous, feeling like your stomach hurts, and then high level anxiety can be, my brain isn't functioning right now, I can't have a conversation with somebody because I literally can't form a thought, I'm hyperventilating to the point where I'm crying and I can't get broken out of that spell, um, I'm unable to do anything that I need to do because I'm so despondent and so tired that I'm just lying in bed all day. We're trying to keep our anxiety from getting to a point where it's not something that's manageable, not something that we can bring ourselves back down from. If you're like me, your anxiety gets to that point a lot. <laughs> your anxiety is something that needs to be intervened on. If you feel that way, as I said, there are resources that you can access. You can always talk to me and you can always use the things that I will be putting in the description. I recommend watching these videos and trying out these coping mechanisms, trying out the self-talk, trying out looking at whether or not you can recognize your signs before they ramp up. But if you need more help, no shame in that. Please seek that help. I'm here to make things easier for you. And if I'm not making things easier for you, then please go forth and find somebody that can because not everyone can be helped by my methods or by somebody else's methods. Sometimes you gotta try things out and you gotta see who helps, whose advice works and what different mechanisms make you feel better. So let's try first with what I have to provide and if not, like I said, got those resources, move forward, move on. I won't have my feelings hurt. I just want the best for you. So signs. We talked about signs, we talked about symptoms. What can make our anxiety worse? So we're down here, we're worried about a test. It's a big test. Let's say it's our final for our AP Euro class that we really, really hated in freshman year and I did really bad and I got a one on the AP test, which I didn't think was possible, but it is. <laughs> We're really worried about that test. Uh, we haven't been doing well in the class all year. We're worried that we're not going to do very well. So if our anxiety is staying in a normal range, we can say, okay, well, I'll try to study for that. I will make sure that I'm getting enough sleep, that I'm eating, and that I'm breaking down my study schedule so that I'm not overwhelming myself. Notice how I gave different things that we can do to keep it down there. So what brings our anxiety to a higher level? It's not doing those things that I just said. If you don't eat, if you don't sleep, if you don't drink enough water, you don't take enough breaks, your body and your mind are gonna rebel against you. If you're not taking care of your physical form, your brain that is piloting it is gonna rebel against you and is gonna make your anxiety worse. You gotta make sure that you are taking care of yourself. That anxiety, that pressure, that stress, only gets worse when you don't do the things that you need to do to keep yourself healthy and alive. So please, first step, make sure that you are trying to take care of your basic needs. I know the idea of an all-nighter where you are chugging coffee and staying up and forcing yourself to write an essay for six hours on end seems great and in every college movie they always are super successful at the end. It's not, you're gonna crash, it's gonna make your anxiety worse, the next day you're gonna wake up and you might feel like you can't function, your brain isn't working, like right now I'm tired and I feel like my brain can't function, I need to take a nap <laughs> or I need to eat something that'll give me some healthy energy. Um, but please make sure that you're taking care of your basic functions first so that we can try to use that as a way to keep our anxiety down here. Something else that we can do is recognize our triggering events. So what causes us to feel greater anxiety? So as I said before, you're worried about a test, 
you haven't been doing well in the class, you got back the results for your AP test, it was a one. That's triggering event right there. You're thinking about your final, you're saying, I can't do it, I'm not gonna do well, I already did very poorly on the biggest test for this class, how could I possibly do well on the test? That's a triggering event and that can cause paranoid thoughts, that can cause irrational thinking, irrational behaviors, and have cause you to shut down and give up and say, you know what, there's no point, I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna fail anyways. Recognizing those triggering events can help you say, okay, this is something that I've traditionally had difficulty with in the past. I can't handle these sorts of things on my own, so what can I do to break it down and make it more manageable for myself? For me, that's not having communication, I'd say is a big one for me. So if I am waiting on a response from a friend about going somewhere and I feel like they're ignoring me, they're not texting me all day, that is a triggering event for me. That's something that's gonna bring my low level of like, I sent a text that I don't know how they're gonna respond and they're not responding, so it's gonna bring it up. And then I'm thinking more and more about, okay, well, I haven't heard back from any of my friends today and then it brings it up. And then I start thinking, oh my God, all of my friends hate me. And it's all the way up here and now I'm panicking and I can't function and I don't wanna to talk to anyone anymore. So recognizing that not having clear communication as a triggering event for me can help me prevent myself from getting up there in future experiences. So how I can do that is say, okay, this is triggering for me. I don't like this. This is something I have trouble with. I could communicate with my friend and say, hey, I know you're busy right now. Um, feel free to get back to me when you can. Uh, it's just time pressing for me. Or I can say, they're probably busy. My friends have their own lives. They're doing something else. It's not personal or I can try to figure it out on my own and try to work on a way that I can distract myself or use my energy for something more constructive at that time. If you can't talk yourself down, if you can't rationalize those triggers, using coping mechanisms is a great next step. So what coping mechanisms could look like could be square breathing, which is something that I really like. So what you do is you breathe in for four seconds, you hold it for four seconds, you let it out for four seconds, you hold for four seconds, and then you repeat the process. So, and then it helps your body reset, it helps your mind calm down, it helps your heart calm down, it helps you kind of return to a functional way of breathing so that you're not hyperventilating and you're not over overproducing that kind of energy that you have no way to use at that time. You can also do yoga to calm yourself down. You can do uh, journaling is really great, writing down how you're feeling at that time, um, what caused you to be at that point. It's especially effective if you're having like a great, like over a few days you're feeling really anxious and you feel like it's getting worse. Writing down in a journal and saying like, this is what's caused my worry and this is how I'm feeling about it. These are the people involved. How am I reacting to this? How can I solve it? That can be a great way to help you organize your thoughts and rationalize them. But a great coping mechanism and a great tool is cognitive behavioral therapy. There are tons of worksheets that you can use to help you self-talk and do the things that I said where you recognize that you're at a point down here but it's starting to get up higher and higher, or say you're up here right now and you wanna figure out how you got there. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of those cognitive behavioral therapy sheets and I will put them in the description for your use at a later time. Okay, so let's check it out. Okay. Okay, so here is one. Um, this website is full of different websites that have the cognitive behavioral therapy sheets, which is kind of funny that it's a website that collects websites. Um, but this one right here, I like because you put down the situation. So I got a new job in another state. Your beliefs about that situation. Um, I'm gonna have to move to another state. It will be disrupting my normal life. I have to do new things and meet new people. Your thoughts about that? Oh, well, I don't want to meet new people. I don't want to forget about my friends. I don't want my friends to forget about me. I like everything in San Diego. Uh, where am I gonna get kombucha? My behavior is because of that. 
maybe I'm putting off packing or putting off doing the paperwork that I need for that job, even though I need it, I know I needed to do it. Um, my bodily sensations, I'm feeling sick. Uh, I got that tightness in my chest. My stomach doesn't feel good. Uh, and I'm constantly anxious. Um, my emotions, I'm worried. I'm kind of angry. I'm a little bit jealous. And then it helps me put all of these things down onto the sheet and think about, okay, this is how I feel about this. Um, is there a better way that I can regulate that behavior? Um, and then there is another one, oh, this one. So it's similar, you write down the situation, so the job, um, the feelings, uh, I feel anxious, the intensity, I feel moderate about it. Um, why do I feel this way? Because I'm worried about leaving my life behind, my friends behind, I have to drive for 18 hours to get up there. Look at your previous response and what if what you wrote was true? So worst case scenario, uh, your friends hang out without you. Why does it matter? Because I'd be jealous and I would feel like I'm missing out. Okay, so what? You got a job in the field that you really like and you can always come back down to visit your friends and have more times with them. So it helps you kind of rationalize those thoughts. Um, in the same vein, this one is helping you uh, reframe those negative thoughts into something that is rational. So instead of saying, nobody likes me, because that's a big thing, that's a hard thing to unpack. You got to a point where your brain is like, nope, you're worthless, no one likes you. That's not helpful. How do you come back from that? How do you bring that back down to here? You break it down and you become a little bit more rational about it. So it's not true. You have friends, you have family. What brought you to that point? Um, my friend didn't text me back, so I'm feeling really anxious about that. and It made me feel like nobody likes me. Okay, so making sure that you're taking those irrational thoughts, those bigger thoughts, those impossible thoughts, and breaking them down into something smaller. So um, I like this one. There's no point in trying that. It won't work. I'll replace that. There's no point in trying to learn guitar. I suck at it. That's not true because I don't put in enough time to practice and that's why I'm not improving. I just have to try little by little and learn the chords instead of trying a song all at once. And if I do it bit by bit, I will get better at it. I just took an irrational thought about something that I wanted to do and feel like I can't do and I turned it into something that is self-talk where I talk myself out of feeling negatively about that situation. And then a last one, is automatic thoughts. So like I said, we're gonna think about the trigger. So triggering, um, I texted somebody that didn't text me back, okay? My automatic thought, my friends hate me. They don't ever wanna to talk to me again. I should just move to another state and never look back. How we can reframe that and take those negative and irrational thoughts and turn them into rational and positive thoughts is I, don't need immediate communication from everybody. I am not owed that. My friends are busy. If they didn't like me, they wouldn't hang out with me. It's okay. Give them time. And if the problem persists, then you can talk to them about it and see what they say. So these are just a few examples of some of those sheets, um, those cognitive behavioral activities that you can do that help you reframe your state of mind or pinpoint triggering events or triggering activities and um, how they bring you to that big, big negative point and how you can instead keep yourself from getting there. So um, <laughs> the sun keeps creeping in. It's telling me that my time is running low. Um, I will really quick tell you about a service project that you can do. Um, <laughs> Oh my God, my laptop's gonna fall off of it. I'll tell you about a service project that you can do during this time. Um, it might be over there because I filmed it earlier. <laughs> okay, so for a um, service project, my suggestion, because we can't do it, is to do a canned food drive at home if you can. If you have anything, um, I know a lot of people are hoarding canned foods right now that they might not be using, um, please. Anything that you don't need in your house, there are plenty of food banks that need help right now and they need donations. So if you have anything that you can spare around the house, toiletries, uh, canned goods, um, even 
I was thinking about crocheting some hats. It's not that cold outside anymore, but at night it can be. So for people who might not have housing during this time, um, or even with the masks that I taught you how to make previously, you could always donate those. Make sure that they're the right uh, material before you donate them though, otherwise they're gonna get thrown out. Um, but doing things like that and giving back when you can't physically go out and give back can be a way that really makes a difference, especially during this time, because there are a lot of people who need food, who need toiletries, who need something to keep them warm that can't get it right now. So I'm gonna do what I can to create and donate. Maybe I'll donate salsa. I won't donate salsa. I'll do something else. <laughs> but please do what you can and help provide for those who might not have it as well off as you do right now. And if you are somebody who needs help and needs those things, I can also put resources to food banks and um, different resources in the description as well. Okay, so I hope you like that. Um, like I said before, this was a really hard video to do. Uh, anxiety is a huge part of my life. It is something that I've struggled with for a very long time. Um, and it's been really hard to come to a point where I can help other people with it. And in fact, that was what got me into wanting to do um, child development and do adolescent work is when I graduated from high school, I started working at camp and I started talking to teens um, about my experiences with anxiety and depression and they were really interested and they felt like I had helped them by giving them that advice and giving that, that point of view. And now that I have the schooling, I have a little bit more qualified, but it still makes me anxious because I know that it's something that I had to struggle with for a long time and something that I still struggle with from time to time. But I want to be able to give you guys everything that you need. And so, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, the next session will be something a lot less heavy. We're going to do something fun. And then um, after that, we have our talk about depression. <laughs> and then we have one more. And then we will be done. And I will hold my laptop. This is going to fall off the bed. Ah! Okay, wait. Do it sideways. I'm going to hold my laptop. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. Um, thank you for your participation. As always, I'm really appreciative of it. Please fill out the surveys. Please give me your feedback. Let me know in the comments how you feel, if you have different coping mechanisms to offer. Um, I, I just want to help. <laughs> I hope that everyone's doing okay. Um, and I hope that... Oh, I hope that social distance ends soon. Anyways, um, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for everything and stay safe and healthy. You think Hosier would like this? Just like without his face. He can't seem to take me to church without a face.